So you can follow along at home if you want to. Actually, it's best if you do follow along at home because it helps to improve your memory when you write something down. So I definitely recommend that. So what you need is an A4 paper and you're going to fold that A4 paper into half. So we are going to use the top section, the half of the A4 paper to write the mind map and then there are indicators as well and then the bottom session is the total information that you need for chapter 2 like basically all the processes summarized okay so i'm just writing down the title from 5 chapter 2 carbon compounds and you can use any pen for this but i use these brush markers that i got and the reason is because if I use pen, you can't really see it on camera. The tips will be too fine. So that's the reason why I used brush markers. But I think that it is enough to use pen. But I do suggest that you use multiple color pens, like at least three color pens for this mind map. So that it is clear. And also because I use brush marker, I can't even fit the word carboxylic acid into it. So use pen for the best effect or use like use colorful pen, inky pens, whatever you like. So I started off by writing the four main carbon compounds in the middle. We have alkane, alkene, alcohol and carboxylic acid. And how this mind map works is that every time you draw an arrow, you end the arrow with the products. So as you can see, I drew arrows from alkene, alkene, alcohol, and then ended with CO2 and H2O because all of them can undergo combustion in order to go and produce CO2 and H2O. So I grouped them together by using the same arrows pointing in the same direction. Okay, And then next, from alkene, we have one arrow with, and it ends with tetrachloromethane because tetrachloromethane is an end product of that arrow and then because there are reactions to convert alkane to alkene and then alkene back to alkane so I'm drawing arrows like return arrows and then from alkene I'm drawing an arrow ending in dibromomethane because dibromomethane is a product and I think that this mind map just simplifies things so much for me back then because there were so many reactions to remember and you have to flip through and read every reaction and I'm a big believer of chapter summaries the way you should have known by now and this is the definition of chapter summary it summarizes the entire chapter in one A4 paper so I think that it is super useful. And then there's another arrow from alkene ending in polyethene. From glucose, there's a way to produce alcohol as well. And alcohol is the end product. So that is why I drew an arrow from glucose to alcohol. And then Alcohol can react with carboxylic acid to produce ester through esterification. So that is why I drew an arrow ending in ester. And then ester are divided into two. We have simple and complex esters. So I included that as well. And then under complex ester, we have saturated and unsaturated.
and the next thing that you have to do is just to fill in all the indicators for these arrows and you will be labeling them below so it's important to fill these indicators and as you can see the arrows from alkane alkene and alcohol which ends in co2 and h2o are all labeled with a because all of them undergoes combustion so that is a common arrow and then the others are different. I just used A, B, C, D, E, F, G to label all these just to differentiate them. And once you are done labeling them, we can move on to the next section down below. So for the next part of the A4 paper, you actually need to draw a table. So I'm just doing that. And the top of the table is labeled with name, reagent, and condition because those are the vital stuff that you have to know for each reaction. So I labeled that. So go ahead and draw a table and then label the table accordingly. So you're going to label the top of the tables with name, reagent, and condition. And once you're done labeling that, we can then proceed with the first reaction which is labeled with A and as you can see A denotes the common arrow coming out from alkene, alkene and alcohol. The reaction is known as combustion, the reagent is oxygen and the condition is simply burn. There is no actual condition for this one. And then I use a different color for B just to differentiate. B denotes the reaction from alkene to alkene. And the name of the reaction is catalytic cracking. No reagent is needed. The conditions are rather important and they are Al2CO3 and heat. C is for alkane to tetrachloromethane. The reaction name is substitution. Reagent needed is Cl2. Condition is UV and sunlight. And then we'll proceed with D. Alkene to alkane. We need hydrogenation, the addition of H2. So naturally, the re reagent used is H2. The conditions are important. Nickel and 180 degrees Celsius. The conditions are the stuff you write on top and below of the arrow. And then E from alkene to dibromomethane. We need halogenation. Pr2. There is no condition for this. And then F. F is from alkene to chloroethane. It is the addition of hydrogen halide. So HCl and there is no condition for this. G is from alkene to ethan-1,2-diol and alkene has to undergo oxidation for this. The reagent needed is acidified KMnO4 and there is no condition. For H, from alkene to polyethene, alkene needs to undergo polymerization. There is no reagent for this, but the conditions are rather important. They are 200 degrees Celsius, 1200 atm, and also oxygen. I is from alkene to alcohol. Alkene has to undergo hydration. And when it's hydration, the reagent is always H2O. The conditions are 300 degrees Celsius, 60 atm, and phosphoric acid. J, when alcohol is to be converted back to alkene, dehydration is needed. There is no reagent. The conditions are porous spot chips, concentrated, concentrated H2SO4, Al2CO3, and heat. And then K is from alcohol to carboxylic acid. Alcohol has to undergo oxidation. The reagent is acidified KMnO4 or K2Cr2O7. You can choose either one. The condition is reflux heating. And then L is from glucose to alcohol. The reaction name is fermentation. No reagent is needed. The conditions are yeast, bracket zymis and no O2. And then N, when alcohol is added to carboxylic acid, ester will be produced. 
through the reaction called esterification. There is no reagent for this, but then you need concentrated H2SO4. And so there you have it. This is the mind map which can summarize the Form 5 Chapter 2 carbon compounds. And the purpose of this video is actually to share this mind map with you guys because I found it to be so useful for me back then. Because this chapter is not complicated, but it has a lot of stuff to memorize. And there are a lot of reagents, conditions, name of reactions, convert what to what, and all that stuff. And it can get very overwhelming. But once you summarize everything into this mind map, it makes things so much simpler. This is the definition of chapter summary. And this is an example of how you can put mind mapping into good use for chemistry as well. I hope that you guys really take note of this mind map and put it into good use. I hope that this video has helped you in some ways as usual. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.